Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. As promised, this video I will be covering 10 of my worst purchases of 2023. My last video I covered my 10 best purchases and it feels kind of harsh to say my 10 worst purchases honestly, but there are different learnings I feel like that have come out of each of these and it's less about them being the worst purchases I would say and more about the reality was different than the actual vision that I had in my head when I originally purchased these things. And of course it's actually really nice to circle back with you all on some of these items. A lot of the times I'm talking about items fresh out of the uh, box <laughs> from ordering them so I haven't sometimes fully worn them in yet so it's really nice to be able to go back on some items that maybe didn't wear well or you know had some quality issues just to have you all be aware as consumers too so maybe you don't have to go through what I did and before I get started I also want to say thank you for being so respectful in my last video if you're like what are you talking about I recently went through a large hair change I went back to my natural hair color and it just makes it a lot easier to put myself out on the internet when I have a really respectful audience in the comment section. So thank you all for that. Now let's jump right into it. Also apologies for my last video when I was going to post it. I was counting everything and realized I left off one of my favorite pieces, which is my wool coat from Koss, or I guess more of a wool kind of jacket from Koss. So I made sure for this video to lay everything out, to count everything, to make sure that I have everything. So again, apologies for that. It was my first video coming back in the new year and you could tell it was a little rusty <laughs> in that regard. So the first thing, shockingly, are actually two pieces from Koss. As you guys know, I absolutely love Koss. And these are pieces that just didn't really work out for me. In fact, one of them I actually ended up passing on because I just really had to force myself to wear it. And I just don't really want anything in my closet at this point where it's hard to style, it's hard to wear, I don't have tons of joy when I'm wearing it life is too short. And the piece that I'm talking about is this silk sort of zip up polo from Koss. And I will insert pictures of me wearing it just so you get an idea of what it looks like. And I gave it away when I did kind of my big closet clear out video, which I'll leave linked above and below if you want to check that out. And there's also kind of a few things in there that I discussed that why they don't work for me, etc, etc. Anyway, so the look initially of this polo, I was very into it. I love the fabric. I love the ribbing on it. It is a silk, but it was, it's not like a shiny silk, if that makes sense. So it was really breathable. It was really nice fabric. The thing that got me about this shirt is the hardware, ultimately. It had this silver zipper that just was so early 2000s for me, which I know was the look, but I don't wear a lot of silver in general. I usually tend to stick to, you can see a lot of my jewelry is all, well, that's like white gold. <laughs> I don't wear a lot of silver. All of these are silver, but I do really tend to stick more with gold and things, or honestly, just like no hardware at all. This was such a strong piece of hardware and it had such a strong tie to like the early 2000s which is an aesthetic that I don't necessarily feel connected to even though ironically that was my childhood so I should feel connected to it but it's not really a look that I try to recreate on a regular basis I'm definitely more into like the 90s kind of aesthetic or or other decades but anyway I just had a really hard time styling this and so ultimately I ended up passing it on and so now I think if I'm gonna go into the polo trend I will have a cost haul coming up so stay tuned for that and there's a polo shirt in there so I'm really into the polo look I have multiple polo things in my closet whether that's that beautiful polo cape that I got from Zara that's like a sweater cape but this just didn't do it for me. I just need to stay away from hardware, I think, on my clothes because it just makes it a lot harder to mix and match with things. So that was the big learning there. The second piece, I had to pull this out of the laundry because yes, I actually have worn this recently, but this is what really got me thinking about this piece. And this is one of my favorite things to get at Koss. And what it is, is like a very, very thin, I mean, it's so thin, you can see through it, obviously, uh, 
100% wool top. And so because it's so thin and it is 100% wool, it makes for such a great layering piece. I have it in black. I have it in a kind of three quarter sleeve black. First one's long sleeve. This is a bit of a cropped one. So I thought, I love this top so much, I should try to get it in a color. I really do love this forest green color. I think it's very flattering and I just think it's a really beautiful kind of rich color. I was trying to experiment with color more. But the problem with this shirt is that, or I guess the strength of the shirt, I should say, is that it makes for a really incredible layering piece because it's so thin and because it's so see-through, it's not really something you necessarily want to wear on its own. You certainly could, if, especially if you wanted that aesthetic with like a black bra showing through or something, but I usually just stick to wearing this as a layering piece. And so, yeah. Basically, if you use this as a layering piece, you don't see the color. And if anything, because I already have two black shirts like this, I really wish I would have gone for like a lighter one, like a cream or even a light gray that I could wear under some of my cream sweaters or gray sweaters. And so this one just really doesn't have much of a place in my closet. I never grab for it. I will always grab for the black ones. In fact, the only reason I wore this one the other day is because I wore it underneath of my green sweater from Nadam that I love, but I don't wear that enough to just pair the two greens together and feel good about the fact I have matching green <laughs> shirts on. And they raised the price of this. And so normally I believe they're around $50. This was, I think, $80, which is substantially more expensive. So yeah, this is a very expensive undershirt that I rarely wear. So I would say this was a pretty big fail for me. And I do wish I would have just gotten the cream or the gray color because I think I would wear that a lot more. The next two shirts are, again, shirts. <laughs> They're from, I guess I'm a little more experimental when it comes to shirts, but, uh, or I just instantly return pants if they don't fit or something. But these next two shirts are from H&M. In fact, I think these actually were in the same H&M haul kind of video. And I'll go through them one at a time because they kind of have different pros and cons to each. This shirt, I do love, and I know I just talked about having a polo without hardware. This is such a good example of a polo without hardware. The thing that gets me with this one is the fit. I do love the general fit of how it's a little more cropped. It can tuck into things really nicely. I do like that about it. The things that I don't like about it are how short the sleeves are. And they kind of have this little, it's like this tiny little sleeve. And then I don't really love the cut of how just this comes. I wish this almost came down a little bit lower. You can see shirts like this. I mean, everyone made a shirt like this. Pretty much any company that manufactures a sweater has a shirt like this, and they all came down a little bit lower. So I just felt like the proportions were really off on this shirt, and I think because of that, I just never really grabbed for it as much. I would much rather grab for a very similar top that I have from Zara, which is again a nice knit thick top like this, but it has a little bit longer sleeves and just a full high neck. And so for that reason, yeah, I wish I would have maybe sized up, and I got a size small but maybe if I would have gotten the medium or the large, it could have been a little more oversized. It would have given me just some proportions that I would have enjoyed a little bit more, but I just think I just wish I would have been a little more critical when I bought this and just returned it and tried a different size or just returned it because I just don't grab for this shirt enough. On that note too, this one I'm hoping is a little bit of a fluke. I think I ordered this in maybe the end of the spring season. So maybe we were getting into summer and I just never really had a chance to wear it. Maybe it's tough because it's a little bit of a tight fitting top. So you really have to like tuck it into things. I'm not really sure what's deterred me from this shirt because when I look at it aesthetically, I really like it. I love the fabric. I love that it's like a little bit sheer, but a little bit not. I like the polo. I like the long sleeves. I like the navy color. I really do. I just, again, don't really grab for it that much. And so maybe in the spring, this is going to be a challenge to myself that I hope I'm going to wear this shirt more because I can't really think of a reason why I'm not <laughs> wearing this shirt, but I'm just not. So yeah, that was another bit of a fail from H&M. 
And this is the final clothing piece before I get into all of the accessories, but this one hurts. I think I showed you all this in my holiday outfit video. If this was in a black or a gray, I would wear this all the time. I love this. I love the fit of this. It's a little oversized. It's a really comfortable knit, super soft. It's a bodysuit, so it tucks in really easily to things, which I love. I want to wear this, honestly, just even around the house more, but I don't. And it's the color. It's the color for me. This was, you guys know, clearly I struggle with color <laughs> in general and styling color. And I think that's also kind of why, I mean, I've talked before about why I really tend to gravitate towards more neutral colors. I think they look more expensive. I think they're much easier to style. You get a lot more bang for your buck out of your wardrobe because you can mix and match more. There's so many reasons why I prefer neutrals, but yeah. This red, this like really intense red, I think made its debut at the Hermes show in the spring or the summer. And so it's been huge. It's been in all the like high fashion houses now. I just find this color so incredibly hard to style. If you have any tips, please give them to me. I do think it would look good with like camel and navy and like a charcoal gray. Charcoal gray is really the best I think with this and I have just gotten some new gray trousers which might look good with this but again like it's why is it this hard <laughs> like it shouldn't have to be this hard and maybe it's just a familiarity thing as I get used to just wearing color a little bit more but it's just not something that I gravitate towards easily and effortlessly so for this reason I want this to work. This was expensive. It was $120. It feels amazing, but it's just been really tough for me. Actually, I'm kind of, that's strange that I'm looking at this pile now because three of these shirts are polos, but that's not the reason. Because again, like I said, I have polos that I really like, so I don't think it's the style. I really think it's the fit and the coloring. So yeah, those three haven't really cut it for me. Now let's get into the accessories. So this is one, you might be wondering why actually I'm wearing my Hermes workout band and that's a great reason. So this is one that I wear pretty much every day, but I took it off because I want to show you why it made it into the worst purchase. In general, I will say I'm a big fan of Hermes and I do find their quality to be incredible, but this leather has just worn in a very intense way. So this is the Double Tour Apple Watch band, and this is where the leather overlaps. So for example, it kind of like crosses over, and that's where it crosses over, and it has just rubbed and rubbed and rubbed. So because this is a lighter, this is the gold colored leather, it's just really, really worn. And I've had this for almost a year now, a little bit over a year. So I just think for Hermes and for the price, the fact it's worn so much like that, I mean, they know that it's the double tour, that it's going to rub like that. If I was going to get this again, I'd probably get it in black, just so you won't have as obvious of a rubbing, in my opinion. One thing also that was very disturbing to me it was actually this sort of splitting of the leather as you can see here that's completely split so and what i mean by that is like where they've sort of fused it together that's just completely worn through so you can see it and then there's another spot where also you can just see general wear these have like browned very brown so yeah, that might actually be the only place where that's split, but it's the place where it gets a lot of wear and tear. So in general, because of that, uh, I would either say don't buy it. <laughs> don't have just one watch strap, one leather watch strap. Have multiple ones that you're kind of rotating out so that you're giving your straps a break. 
or get it in a darker color so that it's not so obvious. I can't even imagine what the cream color or an even lighter color would look like, but I was just a little disappointed in Hermes because I do feel like it should be a little sturdier than that. So just wanted to call that out for you all. I know that my Hermes Apple Watch video has been really popular and in general, I apps, I'm obsessed with my watch. I wear it 24 seven, nighttime, daytime all the time so i do love my watch in general but this particular strap has just really worn very quickly which i don't love another item that is on this list because it has not worn well is this flat from the h m premium collection again in general the h m premium collection is one of my favorites to shop because it is such high quality but these shoes, I was trying to think if I had any other H&M premium shoes, not that I've worn regularly, most, mostly because I actually think I need to size down generally in these shoes. I don't think they do half sizes, but I got these in a size 10, which is a 41 for H&M, and I honestly could have probably gotten away with a 40, and I feel that way about my wedges that I also have from the H&M premium collection. But in general, I had high hopes for these. These were slides that I really wanted to wear in the summer and spring, wear them into the office, that type of thing when I didn't want to particularly show my toe, but I wanted to have a little bit of breathing in it. Sorry if you guys can hear my washer going crazy in the background. But I wore these out in the rain and these are 100% leather. And yes, it was raining, but hello weather life happens like I've worn plenty of my other leather shoes out in the rain and they haven't worn this way so basically the whole front part which is a pointed toe is obviously meant to be very structured is completely buckled now it's lumpy it's buckled it just it just doesn't look good and therefore I don't really grab for these anymore and I'm bummed because I just feel like they're ruined from one wear in the rain, which just feels ridiculous to me. So yeah, that's why this pair is in here and that makes me very sad. Ah, before I forget, I think that's also why I'm miscounting is because some of these things are in storage. So I'm having to just talk through them because I do have my spring, summer clothes in storage. Another one that was not a quality problem, was not a style problem. I don't know if you watched my summer sneaker video, but I wanted some different summery sneakers to kind of, uh, yeah, just have some new options in the summertime to grab for. And I bought the Van Slip-Ons in cream. I love a Van Slip-On. I have them in black. I think it was a collab with Madewell or J. Crew and his little perforated black leather slip-on. I have worn those to death, so I thought, I love these so much. I love the ease of the slip-on. Ease. I love the ease of the slip-on. I love just putting my foot in and being able to go. I thought these are kind of great beach shoes. And I think I was thinking that I didn't want them to get dirty. <laughs> I don't really know. Or maybe I just thought that the white was going to feel too harsh. So I got the cream color. And the cream color is equally as jarring to be honest in terms of being very bright so i honestly wish i just would have gone with the white because i find the cream is too yellowy it's not like an off white like i was hoping for i think it's a little too buttery and again i just i find it very hard to style with things so i wish i would have just gotten gone for an all white like my supergas <sighs> Yeah, so that's a little bit of a bummer because I love those shoes. They're such high quality, but I just find the cream really hard to style and to wear. So wanted to call those out before I forgot because I actually don't have them physically on me. But again, I will insert photos so you can see what they look like. The final thing, well, there's two more things, but this one, it's kind of a surprise or it might be a surprise to some of you because this is a shoe from AD. That's their kind of signature little stitching there and I was trying to get these shoes for a while these were like the hot 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 shoe that everyone wanted they were sold out for ages everyone made knockoffs everyone's still making knockoffs this season H&M Zara they really kick-started this whole kind of like square toe ballerina flat trend and I have the ballerina flat and they are by far my favorite shoes ever i wear these constantly 
way too much. I spent so much money at the cobbler getting them all resold and redone just because I, I wear them so much. And so I bought this pair. And this pair has been a disappointment, I will say, because I just don't grab for it as much. And here's why. A couple of reasons. I think in general, this strap, which I understand is the purpose, the style is a Mary Jane style. This strap, I feel like just kind of cuts the leg off or cuts the foot off awkwardly for me personally. And I feel like I'm more cognizant of this because I have a really large foot. <laughs> And so I just feel like when I wear these with jeans, like my sister can wear these and they look so cute on her. But when I wear them, I just feel like it's cutting my foot up and making my legs appear shorter in strange ways. And I just don't grab for it as much as the classic ballet flat. I just think this is more flattering again, because you have a longer undisrupted line with your foot versus this one. And this other reason, which is probably frankly the biggest reason, this one's actually made from a different leather than this one. I mean, they look identical on film, but I don't know if I can get closer, but this one's actually like a softer leather than this one, which you would think that would mean it would be more comfortable, but it's not. <laughs> so I think because you have, I don't, I'm just, I'm just like pinching this for you all, but if you can kind of see how this comes out a little bit it's almost like there's a rope inside of here and that's kind of keeping the structure of the foot up because as you can see it's a very slouchy leather this is very harsh and doesn't stretch well and is very tight on the foot so therefore on the back of the heel it's very tight and it just hasn't stretched out nearly as well because these shoes to be honest are extremely uncomfortable when you first get them and then when they stretch out they're the most comfortable shoes ever it just takes a little while these not so much these have not really stretched out in the way that i would like so they're just not as comfortable which is a bummer i wish they were honestly just made in the same way as these and they just put a little strap there that would have been ideal so ad if you're watching that's my feedback <laughs> and yes so the final item is a handbag and this one breaks my heart because this is another quality issue and this particular brand is a brand that I love. I have covered them in my favorite non-designer handbag video. In fact, this little guy made an appearance in my 10 best purchases of 2023 because it truly is and I love this handbag and it's fantastic quality. So I don't really know what happens with the clay clutch over here which is also from flattered and this was actually what made me want to purchase anything from flattered in the first place so i love the look of this clutch i love that it's like this really casual paper bag style bag perfect for daytime but you can also wear it for nighttime it's real leather so when you look at it from this angle it's beautiful it's perfect fantastic this broke on me very quickly. I'll just be perfectly frank. So the way that this part works is that there's two large metal kind of like rods I can actually show you because as you can see here, I can pull it out. And that's a problem because basically the bag has broken. Um, not to get too close into it, but there was a little like peg that kind of holds these two sides together on either side and both pegs at various points have now completely fallen out and therefore these little metal bars will just shoot out so i really need to figure out a way even if it's frankly i think i might just resort to like hand sewing the sides together which i don't know why they wouldn't just do that and have this be all hidden. I don't know why you feel the need to like have the metal sticking out like that, but long story short, I think this bag is very poorly constructed and that made me really sad because I love this bag and I do want to try to hack it and fix it in some way, but this bag was like $300. And so for being $300, it shouldn't have fallen apart like that only after a few wears. So I'm very sad about this bag and I just wanted to let you all know that. I feel weird <laughs> leaving 
you all on that kind of a note, but I will say, let's, let's end it on a positive note. For how many things I purchased last year, I do feel like this is a relatively small group of failures. I do think I actually had really good focus and intention and filtering last year compared to previous years, and I was far less wasteful. So although, you know, I was being extremely critical in this video of all these different items, like as a whole, I think I did a really good job with my purchases last year. So. I just wanted to call that out, <laughs> but I do want to bring to light just some things that didn't work out so well. So yes, but I promise next video will be a really great one. I've got some exciting stuff coming up. I've got some things covering different boots. I've got a nice cost haul coming up for you all. So make sure you subscribe just so you don't miss any of those. And yeah, I'll see you all later.